Hey, I'm Reginald Galloway, I'm a lieutenant with Big Spirit Fire Department. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys a class on fire safety and prevention at home. We're going to talk about fire safety. I'm going to give you guys a couple tips, just safety tips, and also give you guys a couple tips on how to prevent fires in your home. At the end of this class, I'm going to give you guys an assessment test and also an instruction evaluation sheet that we're going to fill out. You guys are going to fill out based on my instruction today. We have a couple of objectives for today. Uh, the first one, we're going to educate participants on how to avoid fires and fire-related injuries. We're also going to create awareness of fire deaths and injuries. And then we're going to inform participants of their personal responsibility towards fire safety and injury prevention. We're also going to talk about different types of fires today. And uh, we're going to talk about fire extinguishers a little bit. I'm going to show you guys the correct way to use fire extinguishers. On average, there are more than 350,000 residential fires each year in the United States. There are many types of fires, but today we're going to harp on these residential fires a little bit more. There are approximately 2,620 civilian deaths each year from these residential fires, as well as 11,030 reported civilian injuries and 7.2 billion in property damage each year in residential fires alone. Most of the time in the home, people usually feel the safest. They generally relax, let the guard down, but most of the time, Residential properties are where most fires and fire-related deaths occur. 30% of all structural fires occur in residential properties, and 72% of fire-related deaths occur in these residential properties as well. There are many types of fire causes. Today, we're going to talk about some of the top ones. Start off with cooking fires, with approximately 50% of all residential fires coming from cooking. Then we have heating fires at 9%. We have unintentional or careless, 8%. Electrical at 7%. Arson, 5%. And smoking, 3%. We're going to talk about a couple of these causes next up. Just go in depth on them a little bit on ways on how to prevent some of these fires. All right, we're going to start off with cooking fires. You always want to pay attention to what you're cooking at all times. You never want to leave it unattended. If you're cooking, you want to stay in the kitchen with it while you're cooking. If you have to leave the room, you want to stop whatever you're cooking at that time. You also, you never want to sleep. You never want to cook while you're sleepy or you're impaired in any way. So if you've been drinking or you're taking some type of medication that impairs your ability to stay awake, you don't want to be cooking. You can, you can fall asleep at any time or just be drowsy and not really paying attention to what you're doing and start some type of fire. And that could be catastrophic. So you don't want to do that. If, you, if you're sleepy or you're impaired in any way, you don't want to cook. Like I said, you have to leave that room. You want to stop what you, you want to stop cooking that food at that time and just wait till you get back in the room so you can so you can monitor it. A couple ways to reduce the chance of a cooking fire. You don't want to have any curtains, pot holders nearby while you're cooking. These items can catch on fire at any time. You also, if you have on any long sleeve bag, baggy clothes, you don't want to you want to, don't want to wear those while you're cooking. They can easily catch on fire and harm you as well as be cause big damage to your home. You also want to clean your clean your stove top frequently to avoid grease buildup. You don't want to have a dirty a dirty stove top. You want to clean that grease rec whenever while you're cooking. When you finish cooking, you always want to clean it. You want to keep that clean at all times. You also want to keep your flammable cleaners away from the heat sources. Any cleaners you have, you want to keep them far away. While you're cooking, you don't want to have them nearby because they can combust. I'm going to talk about grease fires. This is a type of cooking fire. You always want to have a matching lid to whatever dish you're using nearby. If you do have a if you do have a grease fire, you want to put that lid on and you'll smother that fire and it'll be over. If you do have a, a small grease fire, like I said, you can smother it with that lid. You never want to put water on a grease fire. You put that water on it. It'll only make the situation worse. All right, before we go on to electrical safety, we're going to talk about fire extinguishers while we're talking about the grease fires. So I have a fire extinguisher here with me today. Uh, so if you do have a fire, you don't have the lid nearby, you can use this extinguisher that I have here. You want to always remember PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. The P stands for pull. You want to pull the pin away from the extinguisher. Then you want to aim the extinguisher at the base of the fire. Then you want to squeeze the trigger and then you want to go in and sweep your motion until the fire is completely extinguished. 
once that fire is extinguished, you still want to call 911. You want to get them there so they can investigate to make sure everything is okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about electrical safety a little bit. You never want to overload your electrical sockets. You never want to run cords on the rugs or furniture. These cords can become worn, overheat, and cause a fire at any time. And you won't know because it's under some type of furniture. You won't you won't see it. You also you also want to use power power strips equipped with overload protection. And you want to make sure all power strips and extension cords are tested and approved by laboratories such as the under underwriters laboratories. I'm going to talk about smoking related fires. Cigarettes can smolder for hours. A lot of people don't know that. Even smokers don't know that. They can smolder for hours. If you think it's out, it's still smoldering. You never want to smoke inside. That's a good safety tip. You also want to discard the smoke materials in a fire safe container. You, it's best to use a proper heavy ash tray, which won't tip easily. And you don't want to improvise. Don't throw them in a trash can. Don't throw it in the grass. You always want to use, like I say, this heavy ash tray, which, which is harder to tip over. Also, with the smoking, a couple more tips. Never want to smoke in bed. You don't want to smoke if you're tired or sleepy. I like with the cooking, if, if, you're, if you're taking any type of medication that impairs you or you've been drinking, you don't want to smoke. You can fall asleep at any time. You catch your sheets on fire. You can fall on a carpet, curtains, anything, and start a big fire. Another thing a lot of people don't think of, you having a, a gathering at your home, you have people over, a lot of people smoke. After the party, you want to check. You want to check your couch cushions, check the outside furniture to make sure nobody just left left a cigarette right there. Because, like I said, you can smoke it for hours, and you would hate for it to be in your couch cushion or something and start a fire after a party. So it's a good idea to check after you have after a gathering, just to check all furniture inside and outside of your home. I'm gonna talk about counters a little bit. This can go in the unattended or careless category. It's best to use flameless candles. They're a lot safer. Uh, when you do use candles, you want to stay in the room with it while it's burning. If you have to leave the room, blow it out before you leave the room. You don't want to leave it unattended. You also want to keep it away from things that can burn. It's best to keep it at least a foot away. These things can be curtains, clothing, um, also other things that can combust. You don't want to have it near cleaners or you don't want to have a, a directly on things that can combust and start a fire. Like I said, you have to leave that room, you blow that candle out, and you can always light it back when you come back into the room. A couple, we got to talk about a couple of uh, important safety tips, safety elements. Starting with alarms, you have smoke alarms, and you also have carbon monoxide alarms. You also have fire extinguishers, which we talked about earlier, and uh, safety plans. We're going to talk about each of these. All right, smoke alarms. The presence of smoke alarms reduces the risk of death by 50%. It's best to have smoke alarms in your home. No, no improper placement of these alarms because they can save your life. Breathing smoke can kill you. This smoke is toxic. If you, if you must escape through the smoke, you always want to get low as possible when exiting the house. Like I said about alarm places, you want to know proper placement, knowing where to place them. You want to make sure you can hear the alarm at every place in your home. If you only have alarms at the front of your home and you can't hear it in the back, you want to install one near the rear of your home so you can hear it no matter where you are in, in that home. They also should be loud enough to wake you if you're sleeping. Some people may think they're annoying, but that annoying sound can save your life. You also you want to check these alarms once a month. You want to change the batteries once a year and replace these alarms every 10 years. And the smoke, these smoke alarms, they should be on every level of your home, in every sleeping room, and on the outside of the sleeping area. All right, carbon monoxide alarms. Carbon monoxide is an invisible, an odorless gas. There is no way to detect this gas without an alarm. Some of these symptoms can mimic flu-like symptoms. A lot of times you can have a carbon monoxide leak and you don't know it until it's too late. But if you do, Suspect that you're having carbon dioxide poisoning. You want to leave the house immediately and call 911. You don't want to wait around. You want to get out of there immediately. Call 911. If that's not the case, you can go back inside the home. 
but high, C, high carbon dioxide levels can be fatal, causing death within minutes. So like I say, if you feel like you, 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 you've been exposed, you want to get out of there immediately, you can call 911. All right, we're going to talk about fire extinguishers. We already talked about pads. Like I said, you want to pull You want to pull that pin. You want to aim it at the base of the fire. You want to squeeze the trigger and go into sweeping motion. And like I said, once you think you got it out, you want to call 911, get them out there to make sure it's completely extinguished. You also want to have these extinguishers mounted in, a, in an obvious place near an exit. That's the best place. Um, if you don't know how to use the extinguisher, it's best, if, if you're in doubt, get out. You, you just get out and call 911. If you don't know how to use it, just call 911. Like I said, I told you guys how to use it. Like I say, remember pads. Keep that in your mind, pads. And it'll help you when you're in that situation. All right, escape routes. This goes along with your safety plan. When that smoke alarm sound, you may only have a couple seconds or minutes to escape safely. You always want to have a meeting place to everybody to gather outside. Uh, this place can be a mailbox, a utility pole, maybe a car you have in the driveway. You want to have that. You want to have that place that everybody goes to meet after they leave the house. Make sure everybody in the house knows this plan. They know the, and they know the necessary meeting place. You also want to plan at least two ways out in case one way in case one way is filled with smoke. So if you have you have your front door. And if the smoke, if the fire is in the living room and you can't get out that door, maybe you have a rear, a back door, or maybe a window on the first floor that you can exit out of. I make sure everybody know, everybody in the house knows of at least two exits. If you do have a fire and you can't extinguish it with a fire extinguisher, but even if you do extinguish it with a fire extinguisher, after you want to leave and call nine one one. You also you want to report all fires to the fire department, whether it's been extinguished or not. You want to report it to the fire department so you can get somebody out to investigate. You don't want to ignore alarms. If you have that fire alarm, that smoke alarm, you want to take it seriously. If you stay in an apartment complex that has smoke alarms every day, every day you need to take it as you need to take it serious. Each day, you never know that fire may be real this day. So you always want to take each alarm very seriously. Once you're out, you always want to stay out. If, you, like I say, go to that safe place, go to that meet place, meet up, stay there until it's been cleared to maybe go back inside or, or you have further directions. If you have a, think you have a pit inside or you, you don't want to go back in for that pit, you want to stay outside at that meeting place until you've been given a clear to go inside. You also want to notify the fire department if anybody's unaccounted for. Like I said, if you have mom, if she's out at the safe place, you don't go back inside for it. You let the fire department know, and they'll go back inside. They'll go in if it's safe, and they'll 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 check for it. All right, going to sum it up a little. Going to sum it up now. There are many ways to reduce the risk of fire. These things can include when you're cooking, keeping that lid nearby, paying attention at all times, never leaving it unattended. When you have a, with electrical, you never want to overload your electrical sockets. You always want to be aware of what you're using. When you have these candles, you want to use them responsibly or don't use them at all. Just with cooking, if you have to leave the room, blow it out. You don't want to leave the room while the candle is burning. If you must smoke, be responsible. Be responsible. You want to smoke outside. Dispose of it properly. Make sure it's, it's not smoldering. You also want to have a fire safety plan and practice it. Everybody in the family should know the safety plan. You should practice it often so everybody is, is, is aware of what to do in case of an emergency. You also want to have working smoke and carbon dioxide alarms in your home. Because like I say, these smoke alarms can, can it reduce the chance of death by over 50%. So you want to have these alarms to make sure they're functioning properly at all times. You also want to just be responsible. All right. Before we go, these are just a couple of don'ts. So this guy here, he's smoking and he looks like he's asleep. At any time, this can fall on that pillow, these sheets, and start a fire while he's sleeping. So like I said, if, you, if you're sleepy, you're tired, you don't want to start smoking, you don't want to smoke, lay down, you can accidentally fall asleep. So you, that's, that's a big no-no. 
All right, right here, they have all of these all of these things plugged into this one thing that can be very dangerous. You want to make sure that, that it can handle that load, which I'm sure this cannot. So you want to be aware of that at all times. All right, another thing, we have this tile. They have this tile right here by this spot. You want to keep these items far away. Tiles, curtains, like I said, you have bag, a baggy shirt on. You don't want to be nearby nearby that flame. So if this is where short sleeve shirts while you're cooking, you don't want to have that nearby because it can start a fire. This goes along with the electrical aspect. They have the they have the heater plugged into the to this outlet. They obviously could not handle that load. You want to you want to make sure that 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 the outlet you use can handle it because it can start a fire. Thankfully, they caught it in time and they, and they they were able to just unplug it without uh having a fire. All right, this sums up the class for today. All right, we're going to give you guys this assessment. And we also, after you finish that, I'm going to get you guys to fill out the evaluation form on how I did today. Thank you.